Hi everyone, it's Jenny from Jenny Stitching Simply here on FlossTube and on Instagram. And I am so excited to be back. Um, I did a FlossTube extra about how I store my stitching and sewing supplies in a small space, but it has been a few months since I've been back with a regular update. So I'm very grateful to be here. Um, in sad news, Roman is not with me. He, um, he started working and he's been having to do a lot of filming for mountain biking. I think that we were at Blue Mountain for about 31 hours in the past three days. Um, and I say we because since he doesn't drive yet, I'm still included in all this. Um, so it's bittersweet, but for those of you who may be watching for the first time, my son Roman um, was the one that, I don't wanna say forced me to make my first floss tube video, but it was pretty close to that. So I'm, if it weren't for Roman, I would never have started doing this. So he um, showed me how to use his camera and I, we kind of switched the uh, location, like behind me is the, um, my table that I have all my supplies on. So we're gonna, you know, I'll keep playing around with it, especially since I'm doing it on my own now. But I'm really happy to be back and I'm very grateful for everyone that um, made comments or sent messages. Thank you, Alice, too, that was really encouraging. Um, so I'm gonna try it today by myself. So I have lots of things to show you since it has been a while. And I am going to start with fully finished items. I'll show you my whips, um, what I did in May for kind of sort of mania, not really. Um, and I have the giveaway winner from last time and also a giveaway for this video as well. So we'll start with the fully finished items. So this goes all the way back to April when um, Nicola from Bumble Stitches had started the Pocket Full of Posies Sal. And I did an Avlia piece um, called Delphian Flower. And I apologize, I'm gonna to try to get it to focus. So my intention was to do the entire pattern, the mirror image. And when I was stitching it and had done the first row, I thought, wow, this is a really beautiful band. And I was looking at like my boxes and things that I use to store my supplies and thought, I kind of feel like I want to put it on something like this where I'll see it all the time. So what I ended up doing was putting it on my basket that I use. This is like my whip basket. I'm trying to get it. I'll get better at getting it to focus. So I stopped at the first band and then I attached it to the basket. And I like the fact that, you know, it's right in front of me all the time and I can enjoy it. So that was the first fully finished item. And so that was fun having the sow to keep me motivated to finish it. And the second fully finished item I had started, I think it was for my brother's birthday, March 17th and it is a modern folk embroidery pattern. It is the Italian bird pincushion. And I had probably about a quarter of it done. And then this is what tends to happen when I am working on a smaller project. I feel like I'm so close to being finished. I'm just gonna keep working on it when in reality, there's a ton of stitching left to do. So in my last video, I showed you um, the 
colors that I had used from Almond M&M's, the silks that she hand dyes, which are so beautiful. And I had ordered uh, colors um, thinking for another project. And when I saw them all together, I wanted to use them all together in this, you know, kind of spring palette. And so then I just thought, oh, I'm just gonna power through it and finish this one also. Um, so I'll show you what I ended up doing with this one. So I actually, I used the silks and this was just a 36 count ice blue Zweigar. Um, I don't know if it's still in focus. I can't really see myself on the camera, but I felt like I wanted to try dyeing after I had stitched it. So I went in with a paintbrush and diluted Rit dye. And I got partway through stitching and then I got nervous about whether it was going to work. So I tested it, like I did it on, you know, part I don't know, one of the corners just to see. And I liked it. And there were things, you know, I really couldn't control. Some of it did go a little bit on the stitching. Some of it got like a harder edge than I was hoping for. I wanted it to really be like watercolor. But overall, I'm thrilled with it. And then I wasn't, it was funny because even though Roman's not here, I can still tell you all of his opinions. Uh, he said, you know, I feel like it's too organic for for like a rectangle frame. I thought, yeah, I think you're right. So I just found some twigs in the front yard. There were plenty of them. And I just, um, you know, made a little irregular frame. And then I just took a piece of command strip and just stuck it up on the wall and then pulled it down to show you. So this was the second piece that I had finished. And then, so I had never purchased or stitched a Blackbird design pattern. I know, right? So Amanda at Alba Stitches, she had talked about doing the four Blackbird Christmas patterns for Mania. And I thought, well, you know, I love her and I think that would be super fun. That'd be a good chance to, you know, get my first Blackbird chart. So I did purchase the Feliz Navidad chart, but prior to that was the first weekend of Brenda and Laura's um, Blackbird Design Weekend Sal. So I thought, oh, well, maybe I'll find something little, you know, because I wanted to save the Mania one for when. Amanda was starting hers. So I found um, a small that I really liked and it's from the Garden Series Club. And I picked this one because I liked the geometric aspect to it in the branches. Um, and this one is called Apple Orchard. So I don't think that I would be necessarily doing all of them in the series. There's a few others that I would like to do at some point. Um, so again, that was one where I was working on it that weekend while Roman was biking in New Jersey. And I got, you know, a quarter of the way through and then thought, well, I'm so close to finishing it, which is not true at all. So I just kept going on it. Um, let me just grab it, sorry. So. What I ended up doing with this one is I put it on, this is another one of the containers that I had, that I used for actual storage. Um, I'll take the lid off so you can see it better. But, so let me see if I can get it to focus. Um, so I did it on the called for Confederate gray weeks and I did the called for DMC and then I did switch a few colors 
if anybody really wants to know I can I can figure it out for you I just wanted to brighten the um, the apples and I think the bird was a little bit more gray and I made it more blue and with that one it was the first time doing a blackbird chart I was a little bit surprised at how many colors there were and then I realized that like one of the browns I think there was four stitches in that color so I was glad I did the DMC I usually do DMC most of the time um, so I really enjoyed that and I enjoy again having it on something that is always out and you know I see it when I'm working on things so with that being said um, the chart so if you've watched before I usually prefer PDFs so that I don't have to store the paper charts so I would like to pass this one on to somebody who would like to stitch it along with um, I don't think this is going to focus because it's in plastic but these are the DMC that I used but it seems like there should be more than enough to stitch a second one and then this is a piece that is cut with a two inch margin in the called for fabric to go with the chart um, and the other thing with this is you can I don't know how well you can see but I don't like I've said before I just pull my floss off of the skein when I use it so it may seem like how does that happen and how is it not like a tangled mess but you know pulling from the bottom on the number side like this is this is what it looked like when I was finished with the project so you know it really isn't an issue for me and I just do this instead of putting them on thread drops so if you are interested in me um, sending the charts um, and the supplies just use the word Apple in the comments and like everyone knows you know don't use the word giveaway be 18 so I can ask for your mailing address um, and I'll be happy to send this to you um, also regarding giveaways I I have the winner for the one from the last video that was like two months ago at this point um, so don't ever worry about being um, like not getting in touch with me quickly enough because clearly it takes me a while to make a video now I will say since I'm hopefully if you're watching this video I'm I've done it and I've made it myself and so I won't have to wait for Roman to be available and I can do them more often um, if you subscribe and do the little notification bell then you'll know because I even with that being said I don't think I would ever be able to do it on a specific day you know every two weeks or anything like that but so if you're interested in this just use Apple in the comments and then we'll do the uh, random comment picker so that was my third finish and then I had on my very first floss tube shown this chart the stone street stitchworks MLK sampler and I changed the colors because I wanted to do it as a companion piece to the Susan B sampler at some point so I I didn't do it the exact colors I just did something that I thought would look um, nice with it hanging together so I finished this one and I will tell you about the frame also so it's DMC I can put the colors in the description box I don't remember off the top of my head but I wanted to find a live edge wooden frame for this one I don't know if you can see because I can't see myself but there's actually I found someone on Etsy who makes these beautiful frames and this it still has 
like the green moss on the, the bark, which I think is absolutely incredible. Um, it is called Mountain Lion Designs. And I had really, really liked his work. Um, and it turns out, like when I went um, to look at his shop more, he's from Henderson, North Carolina. And that's one of the places that we love to go camping and biking. So I thought that was meant to be. Um, and he's a very, very sweet, um, sweet artist. And he does a lot of other things I'd like to have too besides frames. But um, I can put that in the description. Oh, I meant to say that too with the last, with the colors. I try to put everything in the description box. So if you look there, um, fabric, colors. This was an old Weeks. I don't remember the color name. I can try to find it, but this one was tough to stitch on. Normally I don't mind the old Weeks, but this one, I probably just should have left it, but there were two bands, like these two bands, that I was half a stitch off and it drove me crazy because I couldn't figure out where I had done that and it was just the fabric was so uneven that I ended up just taking out half the band. Because um, I usually do things kind of like horizontally or like landmark stitching. I don't usually do the border and then fill in. So yeah, this piece of fabric, luckily it was just one of those tiny pieces from one, two, three stitch so I could see the color. And I, yeah, it was, it was tough, it was a tough one. But I love the frame, I'm super happy with this. And it's not, um, you know, I can just pop it out and put something else in it too. I told, I sent the artist a message and I said, I don't think what I was going to put in the frame is worthy of how beautiful your frame is. So, um, yeah, but yeah, I really like how that turned out. Um, so then I worked on whips before. Okay, so my plan for May was that I wasn't really going to do mania in May because my older son, Tristan, was to be leaving for Wyoming for school. And I thought, well, you know, he's just going to want to spend all his time with me. And there's no way I'm going to have to have a stitch. And as it turns out, 19-year-olds uh, are about to leave for school, also want to spend time with their, their friends and, you know, things like that. So I did have time to stitch. And before I started the projects that I had slated for Mania, I tried to work on some of my, like, the other few whips that I had going. I don't really like to have too much going. Um, so the first one that I worked on, let me see, was the Kathy Barrick painted wings. So I really thought that this was going to be like my favorite thing to stitch on and that I was just going to you know, go right through this one super quick. I love the fabric. I love the fibers that I picked. It had a really special meaning. I think I talked about it in my second floss tube video. I was just like really struggling. And I didn't know why um, I wasn't enjoying it as much as I thought I would. So I just had a little bit of the writing done before and then I got a little bit more done. This is on 36 count eucalyptus uh, by Fox and Rabbit. And I realized that it was actually, I think it was the chart. And I, I had the PDF um, and without like showing this is why I like the PDFs because I can just fold things over. Um, but it it was just very dense and small. 
and I'll just show you like a little tiny piece and then what I blew it up to. <laughs> so, I don't know if you can see, it was so, whoops, it was so tiny and then I like blew it up to this. So, I think that will make it much more enjoyable. I just, like the symbols were dark and they're all kind of similar and so I was just struggling a little bit with that. So I'll keep working on this. I just like really wanted to get to the actual butterflies. Um, and then in my travel container, which I talked about last time, this I realized the other reason this is so important to me is because everything we own is covered in mud and dirt all the time in the car because even on the, like a dry day when you go mountain biking it's just everything is like there's just dirt everywhere all the time so this is the project i always keep like in my car or in my purse and i realize that i just i need it's not like super pretty it's just very functional so that i talked about in my last video if you have any interest in that um but this is the Evlia. Armenian ram's horn and I actually started this oops, sorry on February 13th for Tristan's birthday since he is Armenian and I wanted him to have this for his home someday um, and I can read you um, Krista I like how she like most of the patterns that she creates she has like the original piece oftentimes um, just like you would, you know, a reproduction sampler. Um, but it says this compelling design has its origins in a 1926 hand colorized photo of an embroidered Armenian cap, which I acquired many years ago. It features the ancient ram's horn motif alternating with stars and X's. Um, so like the first project that I showed you it's nice because you can take pieces um, and use them for different purposes so for Tristan I'm doing it as charted and I'm using the call for DMC it's only three colors and I got a little bit more progress not a whole lot but I mean I'm this is the top and that's the bottom it's not actually crooked it's the fabrics crooked but so I love I do love it I love this one a lot it's very um, easy to memorize the pattern um, but this is kind of the one that I think because it's in the travel case and it's like in my car or in my purse um, it's not done yet it's like everything normally is in my basket and then I just look at it all the time and work on it so I would like to get this done at some point for him. And this is on the 30 count Makini cloth that you can purchase from Evlia or it sometimes is included in the kits. She usually uses uh, ground cloth or this fabric, which is really nice. So then I had my pieces for Mania kind of chosen and I had said in my last video you know I won't have time to do it because Tristan will be so busy spending time together well I did have time some time a little bit of time and like Amanda said in her video Alba Stitcher I think I'm not really um, like that's not my natural inclination to like start something necessarily it's weird because I like to start things like for significant dates, like birthdays or things like that. But my personal mania plan was to do things from designers that I had not stitched before. So I had a list of like only five or six, I think, and I purchased a few of them. Oh, also, I don't, I don't normally have like a haul section, but the things that I'm showing you, I did purchase like the Blackbird design chart and the fabric um, and then the things I'm going to be showing you now. So 
I think the first one that I started was, well, I shouldn't say that. The other thing I did before Mania was I started the modern folk embroidery, what has been affectionately called the hanky sow. Um, this was the piece that I was waiting for the yard of 36 count antique white for last time. And uh, yeah, it's a big piece. It's four, I'll tell you here. It's 445 wide and 482 high. So I had ordered the fabric and I was so excited to start it. And I showed Roman like thinking you know, that he's gonna be super impressed, you know, this like gigantic sampler. And he said, yeah, well, I mean, there's a lot of negative space. So, and then his next comment was, wow, there's a lot of letters to stitch before you get to the good stuff. And I was like, yeah. So, um, I started it. And again, this was like, I wanted to start it before Mania and I thought I was gonna do all, all these projects and I just, that's not my personality, I guess. So, um, this, okay, so this is the height of it. I have it rolled up and I'm not gonna unroll it. Um, and this is going to be, And I just have, this is not even a full page. Um, but I really like it. And I like the colors. I just, I just did a conversion um, with Seju. Oh, and that butterfly piece from Kathy Barrick. Um, that I'm using Seju on as well. Gosh, I'm terrible. I didn't even like say designer names. Um, but with the uh, Hanky Sow, I'm calling it that because I don't know how to pronounce the actual name of it in Italian. I just chose, oops, actually kind of multi colored, not, not multi colored. I think the original chart, I don't actually know. I'm totally making this up. I did, I just converted one color for another and just am using a different palette. It's kind of like a little bit pastel. Robin was so funny. He heard um, Pam and Steph just keep stitching, you know, talking about how if somebody does a color conversion, it's kind of proper etiquette to go directly to the person that did the work of color converting it and which I totally agree with and Rowan said wow that sounds really serious you know and I said well no no I mean it's just you know it, it takes a lot of work to like map out an entire chart um, and he said oh I thought it just said like red green blue you know and i was like oh no 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 there's like actual like numbers and there's different flaw you know different dyers and all this so uh, you know he knows a lot about cross stitch like probably way more than a 15 year old boy ever thought he would but he didn't he just thought it was like you know you pick a red you pick a purple you know and that's what they that's all that they explained so that was really cute um so i started that before may um and then when I realized that I did have time to start things, I did a little bit on a few projects that I had purchased for Mania. So I think the first one was Feliz Navidad by Blackbird Designs, which is the one that I, that was like my first ever Blackbird chart that I bought that I wanted to do with Amanda from Alba Stitcher. And so I, I thought, well, you know, if we're going to do this Blackbird, I might as well just, um, I'm sure you've probably seen this a lot, 
Um, and I ordered this from 123 Stitch, so I thought, well, you know how they make it so easy to just get everything at one time. So I did the called for fabric, which was picture this plus legacy, I believe. Um, and I couldn't find it in, yeah, 36, they call it for 36 count legacy by picture this plus. I couldn't find it in 36. Now I'm not saying I tried very hard to find it, but I found it easily in 32. So I thought, okay, that's fine. I'll stitch on anything. I had never used picture this plus before and never really used anything that modeled before. So that was really fun. And then as far as the fibers, I thought, well, you know, everybody does Blackbird and they love it. And I'm just going to use the called for weeks and I don't normally use over dyed and they didn't have, they had like, I don't know, maybe a third of the colors in stock. So I thought, oh, whatever, I'll just order the third that they have in the weeks and then I'll do the rest in DMC. So, um, yeah, I just ended up like the, one of the very first colors I went to like called for weeks colors that I went to use on the called for picture this plus like did not even show up at all, which I completely understand, you know, dye lots and all of that. And that's why I don't usually use over dyed threads because I thought like, how sad would I have been if, you know, I want it to look like the picture and I spent all that time sourcing these different colors from all these different places and then it didn't look like the picture or you know it didn't show up on the fabric so I don't know that's why my like tried and true DMC just for me makes me happy because I feel like I'm not disappointed when things don't look the way that I thought they were going to so I had to make some adjustments because like the one weeks didn't show up. Um, I was using DMC anyway, so I can't remember off the top of my head what exactly I changed, but again, I'm, I'm more than happy to figure that out if anybody is interested. But um, I do like the fabric. I think it's really fun. I stitch in hand, so this does seem to work um, really well for stitching in hand. So I think because like one of the colors that didn't show up, of course I defaulted to kind of like a turquoise blue. I'll always end up going to some kind of blue, like if I need to add a color, switch out a color. So I don't remember now like which, I don't know if any of these are weeks yet, if I haven't like gotten to that part yet but that was just my start. So I think with these pieces that I'm talking about for Mania, like I worked on them like a day or two, not like a full day, but you know, like a stitching day. Um, so I did that one. And then the next one that I found was by Ink Circles and I've mentioned my love of Ukrainian eggs before. Um, this is called Hanky Pisanky. So they're either called Ukrainian eggs or Pisanky eggs, but I loved it. So they gave two different colorways. Um, there was a pink colorway and then a rainbow colorway and they called for either Carrie's threads or DMC. So I think I used all the DMC in the rainbow colorway. I did check, so in traditional Ukrainian eggs, like if you go to somebody that sells dyes, there's traditional colors and then contemporary colors. So this design has a mix of both. And I think that so I went through and made sure that I had colors that really were part of like traditional or contemporary egg dyes. Um, and I'm going to use the called for colors, but I think 
I may end up changing some of the placement. Like there's a purple called for. Um, purple's not used a lot in Ukrainian eggs. Um, so I may use more of the traditional colors. And this one is 224 wide by 160. So I just have a small start. Um, I usually stop, start in the top left-hand corner. And this is on the called for 32 count black uh, Zweigart. So yeah, I think, I mean, this one will be really fun to work on. I don't know like when I'm gonna move it into the rotation. I think like, so the Feliz Navidad, I figured I would work on in July because I do like the idea of Jolly July. Like I'd like to work on some Christmas things in July. So with this one, I'm not sure after, like there, there did get a point where I was feeling like, oh my gosh, now I have all these things started and I don't like having all these things started. And, and then I realized it's not really a big deal. Just assign it to a month, you know, like uh, Brenda, handwork maniac. Um, you know, we all love her idea of how she starts something and then she, you know, assigns it to a month of the year to kind of focus on. So once I figured that out and like mapped it out in my bullet journal, I was like, okay, like I can, I can do this. And then the other one that I had intended to start for Mania that I talked about in the last video was the Keys to Happiness, which I still absolutely love. And I will start at some point, but I already knew that I was getting, it was like, I was, it was too much. And so I figured I'd rather save it and enjoy it than just for me, keep starting things. Because the one that I really, really wanted to make sure that I got to was, um, so I, I don't typically stitch pieces, uh, like for the boys with the exception, you know, I'm doing that Armenian one for Tristan. And what happens is they call it, like who who gets it when I leave this earth? And it was so funny because when I think it was Kathy Barrick had made the stickers for the back of your pieces that said who would be, you know, receiving the piece at a later date. Um, I thought, well, I'm glad the boys just call it so that you know, as soon as I start something, they're like, oh, I get that one. I get that one. And it's not really, I mean, it sounds terrible, but it's, I appreciate it. Like I, when they say things like that, it makes me feel like, yes, like, I mean, I'm, we stitch because we love it and it makes us happy. But if it's something that is going to live on longer than I am on this earth, you know, I'm glad that the boys have an attachment to things. Um, there's nothing that they've like particularly asked for for me to stitch for them. Like Roman at one point wanted me to take a photograph of his mountain bike trail that he built and then convert it into a pattern. And that was one of those that would be like just the most difficult Hade project ever. So I did manage to find something that I like for him that has like that mountain trail feel. Um, and then I had, for a very long time, wanted to do a long dog sampler that was either, I think there were three, there was um, the Intuit, it's called Intuition, Rain Dance, or Band of Braves. And I had been de debating about it for a while, because um, I usually don't purchase the chart until I like have a start date in mind for it. So I had asked Tristan before he left if he had any strong feelings about, you know, out of the three, which one he liked best. And he, he absolutely picked the one that I was leaning towards, which was Band of Braves. So this is Long Dog Sampler, Band of Braves. And uh, we love Moab. Um, I, there's something about this that definitely reminds me of Moab. The colors are really beautiful. Um, oh, that reminds me. I did not show you any of the the threads for the. So I I keep my 
kind of like paperwork in that whip bin that I showed you. And then I have my um, threads in this um, sewing box, this shaker box, which I love. So it's, all right, so we'll have to backtrack. These are the colors for the um, Kathy Barrick Painted Wings Butterfly chart, the Seju, and then the Long Dog Sampler chart. So this is what I do. I usually just put them on like a piece of felt. I mean, these are all the colors. It's not actually a ton of colors. And, and then this is the Hanky Pisanky colors, which looks so bright and they are bright, but it's funny how on, on the black fabric and in the order in which they are, like typically the, the deep red would be with like the orange or the green it's it's really interesting how well i guess that's true with anything they always look different on the fabric but so with this long dog sampler I, so I, I i had it just i was absolutely had my heart set on starting this the day that tristan left for wyoming so tristan went to wyoming for a knolls course in wilderness medicine and i was i was I was not worried about him being, you know, 2,000 miles away from home. He travels all the time. He's been to like 13 different countries. Like I wasn't worried about him on the airplane. I, none of that was, it wasn't like I was worried about it. I was sad, you know, that he, he grew up, you know? And so I did really like before he left, like those few months before he left, I did, you know, it was really hard. And, um, we would be driving and Rome and I would be like talking and then I would just burst into tears and he'd be like, wow, that conversation really took a turn. It's <laughs> like, so, and then it just, as it got closer, it got to the point where it was like, I just need him to get to Wyoming because this poor kid has had so many things canceled. Um, like all like everyone has, you know, the past couple of year or year and a half or whatever. So he graduated in 2020. So basically everything as a senior that he was looking forward to was canceled. He was supposed to go to Patagonia with Knowles in January of 2021. So that was canceled because they weren't allowed to leave the country. So then he had this course planned for May. Um, I think he left. That's terrible. I think he left on like May 21st or something like that. That's whatever Saturday that was. But he had to have a negative COVID test, like like the results that Wednesday. So technically, this trip that he had been preparing for for the past year, you know, that really like it's um, four weeks in the was. Wisp Wilderness Medicine Campus and then like the next eight weeks is out in the back country and they're like, you know, rapid water rescue and uh, climbing and, you know, like the other day the helicopter, you know, they were learning about like all the things with, like the helicopter rescue. So I wasn't nervous about like him being away from home, you know, other than of course like I would miss him and he's probably like we keep joking like he's either going to cancel his plane ticket home or come back home get his car and his bike and then just be gone again but um i thought oh my gosh like if if for some i mean we, we're, we're all fully vaccinated but like if for some reason you know he gets a positive covid test he just can't go and i don't think he i like i don't think any of us can deal with one more thing being canceled for him so luckily everything worked out and he so he left really early morning that Saturday. And uh, so I wanted to start, sorry, this is a really long story for why I started this on this day. So I wanted to start this particular project on that day because it reminded me of Tristan. Tristan really likes it too. I'm sure someday, you know, Tristan will get this one. And so I'm working on it. I don't even know where it went. I have so much stuff on the table. Um, and I absolutely, 
love it. I started top left with the band and so I don't have a lot done, but there's actually, it was pretty heavy, like pretty heavy coverage. This is 36 count antique white Zweigart. Um, I don't know if you can like, which way you can see it best. But as I'm stitching this, the, my husband had pulled up, not like, I mean, of course I had already pulled up like the airline, um, you know, thing where you can track the flights because he had a layover in Denver. But my husband pulled up this thing, I think it was called like Flight Aware or something. So you could actually like see the airplane and where it was, like what state it was over and, you know, everything about the flight. And so he would... Like he got to Denver okay, and then they had thunderstorms, so all the flights going into Denver were canceled, and I felt so bad because I'm sure there were other people, you know, coming. The just Denver is such a you know normal place to have a layover before you head west. So um, he actually met some people. Uh, it's only 28 people like in the class, and he met a couple people there in Denver, and then when they got to Riverton in Wyoming, I could see that the plane had landed and he called me like five minutes later and told me that, you know, he had gotten there and gotten the shuttle and I said, oh yeah, I know, you know, I could see her and he was like, what? But I thought, man, that must be a really tiny airport because I could see when the plane landed and he had already gotten his, um, like gone to the baggage claim and was like in the shuttle and the entire thing took five minutes. Like that would never happen in the Philadelphia airport. So he is so happy. Um, I think, you know, when he, we don't get to talk to him often and when they go into the back country, there's no cell phones. Um, but I think he's so happy that he's almost, like when he talks to me about how happy he is, he's almost apologetic. Like he doesn't want us to feel like he doesn't miss us. But, you know, as a parent, there's nothing that I could be nothing could make me happier than him being happy so hopefully he'll do really well i mean there's lots of tests and obviously lots of things that you have to um pass and be certified in and um but it'll be really exciting to see what he does with it so he's there he's good i'm over the crying phase um you know roman will get his license well he'll turn 16 in september and then once he gets his license i know you know i'll He'll be off doing his own thing too. So at least I have my cross stitch and my floss tube to keep me company. But um, then, so I stopped with, with with the mania thing. Like that's, I started those three projects. I mean, that alone would probably keep me busy for the next year. Um, and then I watched, um, Sherry from Colorado Cross Stitch talk about Cross Stitch Camp and I thought, oh, I have to do that, of course. But I had already um, purchased the Lori Holt flea market flower chart that everyone loves as well. And I thought, you know, it's really like the colors are not necessarily like what we have in our home. It's the style wise it's different than what I normally stitch but I, there's just something about it that is so appealing and then I was watching Denise from Black Ribbon Design Studios and she was talking about it and you know how everything she talks about like she's just so joyful and happy and I thought okay you know I, I'm just gonna buy the chart and so I did purchase the chart from 123 stitch or from Fat Quarter Shop of course and then I thought, well, you know, I'll use, again, like if I've never done anything by this designer, I'll use the called four fabric, which was the uh, 25 count Lugana, which I've never stitched on Lugana before. So I thought, okay, that's, you know, a great, um, I'll, you know, I'll try it. And um, I, I had a little accident with it. Um, and I, sh I should know better. I had a cup of coffee and I tend to drink like the same cup of coffee all day, which I have been told is disgusting and that I shouldn't do that, but I do. So like by the end of the day, it's like sludge, you know? So at like eight o'clock at night, I reached for something on the table and I 
dumped it all over the first, um, like this was the first square that I had stitched. Um, and it just, you know, like all, it's just like this old coffee all over it. So, uh, of course I had, you know, I like made this noise and everyone had come running, but I, I rinsed it as quickly as possible and I thought, well, if worse comes to worse, I'll just, you know, dunk it again and make it coffee to, coffee dyed. Um, but it was very sweet how quickly my husband and my son ran to my aid. I think they thought I was going to be like absolutely mortified. But it, the problem is now most of it came out, but what didn't come out just looks like dirt. So I have to, at some point, I figure I'm going to finish stitching it because I don't really mind like dying after the fact. Um, and I'm going to see where those spots end up. And then based on that, I'll decide what I'm going to do with it. But what I did was I did change. So I'm, I'm using all the called for DMC, but I using black, I added black. And to me, a lot of the designs remind me of um, Ukrainian eggs, go figure. And also in Pennsylvania where we live, every old stone barn, you know, structure has hex signs on them. And they're so pretty. You can actually go on tours of the hex signs. Um, so... I added the black. I have not changed any other color and I have not yet used the hunter green and I have not yet used the raisin or the pebble, those DMC colors. So the hunter green, basically I'm just using the other two greens in place of, to be perfectly honest, my son's school colors are that hunter green and black. And so when I see those together, I just think of like Twin Valley Raiders and uh, it's not my favorite color. So, and then, so since I don't normally buy paper charts, I thought, oh, well, this is so pretty. You know, like I can see why people get like so excited about collecting the paper charts. Well, I, I don't know if you can see it from here, but I spilled coffee all over it. Like the ink, um, I'm just hoping that it holds out long enough where like, because right now the, the color is actually coming off, but I can still see the chart well enough to stitch it. But yeah, so I guess that's why I can't have paper charts. Um, but I worked, like, there's a lot of stitching. I, when I went with Roman to those three days at Blue Mountain so that he could record his mountain biking stuff. Like that was like three full days sitting in the car stitching. So it's really fun and it's really, you know, it's really easy to follow the chart and the colors are really happy and satisfying, um, but it's gonna take a while. Oh, and that was, so I decided to do this for the June um, cross stitch camp. And I think I picked something that's gonna take a really long time. So, but because there's like that, I mean, you know, I mean, it's not like it's for fun, but yeah, since I said I'm gonna do it, I really wanna get it finished by the 30th. So I'm not, I have a couple ideas for July, but I, I'm going to think about it a little bit harder than I did with this one because this is pretty much like all of my stitching time. And we're also supposed to be going on um, a vacation in July, so I just want to make sure I'm not like over committing. But um, the other thing that is super important to me is keeping up with the 2021 modern folk embroidery fruits of plenty sal so because i said to roman if i get behind on this like i just know myself i'm gonna be so disappointed in myself and then i'm gonna get farther and farther behind so i typically stitch 
the month, like the month of May, I typically stitch like the last week of the month. I don't know why. I think I just figure that it will definitely motivate me to get it done. And this time, I think I went like, yeah, I definitely went a few days into June, which I often do. I think I finished it like June 4th or something like that. So besides getting the um, flea market flowers done for June, I want to make sure that that doesn't prevent, like I just want to make sure I stay on track with this one. So May is done, June is not yet started. And this is on 36 count. It was antique white Zwagger that I had dipped in Rick dye really quickly in an aqua color. It's 924 and 939. And I absolutely love it. Everyone seems to be enjoying this so much. And because of the stitching where the negative space is the design, I think, I don't know, there's, there's something so satisfying about like seeing that pattern kind of unfold. You know, you're just counting and, you know, I don't know, I go like row by row with those, so I don't miss anything, but anyway. And then all of a sudden, you know, you have this like floral motif or something, it's so beautiful. Um, so I have to make sure that I get June done, you know, at least around like the beginning, end of June, beginning of July. Um, that's definitely my priority piece for the year and I've managed to stay, you know, caught up with it. So I want to continue to do that. Um, and I, for August cross stitch camp, I'm going to combine, um, if you guys have not seen Sarah from so me Sarah wait let me just double check I wrote everything down this time and so far I haven't had to double check I should make sure yes so like s-e-w m-e-s-a-r-a-h on Instagram and on floss tube she is so lovely she is from Northern Ireland and she does beautiful projects and she has just the most lovely calming demeanor and um she mentioned that she wanted to start the Chrisette Agogo um series of like monthly series I don't know if that's focusing I can't tell but she had said you know that she had always wanted to do a monthly series but especially since so many of them are like US based and she hadn't really found one that she wanted to stitch yet. And I had felt the same way. I just hadn't found the right one yet. So when she showed this, I thought, oh my gosh, it's so cute. And they do an Italian, They so the pattern comes in English, Italian, and French. So I want to do the Italian version. And I think I'm definitely going to change the fabric color for each month and I may like may change the uh, do a, a, a little bit of a color conversion and I think that will be for August I will try I, I mean there's definitely so many fabrics that I have never stitched on before which would fit the parameter for um, the month of August which is to try either a new fabric that you haven't stitched on or new floss that you have not worked with before for a cross stitch camp. So that could be for both. So there is a sal and Sarah has the information on her Instagram. She's a beautiful quilter as well. Um, and I wanted to say thank you so much to Jody, uh, Trixie Tricycle. I'm sure you guys have, have already been watching, but um, I've really been enjoying her videos as well. Her projects are beautiful. They're always creative. They're always, um, you know, a little bit different with like the fabric choice or she's very, um, 
intelligent and funny and just really enjoyable to watch. So thank you, Jody, too, for mentioning Roman and I. And um, though I have to announce, I did, uh, sorry, I should do this sooner. So you don't have to sit here and listen to me the whole time if you don't want to. I have, I did the random comment generator for the giveaway from last time, which was the full of Leah kits, um, which is here. I won't take it out of the plastic because it's for somebody and it's already in there. Um, so the winner is Ronnie Tall. It's R-O-N-N-I-E and then last name T-A-L-L. -L. Um, she also she sent her left a lovely comment and also said, "Great job, Roman." So we miss you, Roman. No, it's okay. He won't watch this anyway. <laughs> but yeah, so um, just looking around me, I think that is everything. Um, thank you everyone again so much. It's so much fun to watch everyone. I'm very, very behind on watching Floss Tubes, um, but I missed getting to do this. I appreciate everyone leaving comments um, and all the support that you gave Roman to um, with everything he was helping me with and I hope that everyone is doing really well and getting to do lots of stitching and um, again if you want to enter for the uh, Blackbird design chart and floss and fabric that I'll send all together as a little kit just say apple in the comments and I will definitely see you guys sooner than normal. So thank you again so much. Bye everyone.